Okie dokie. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Speedy and Oz by L. Frank Baum. No, sorry, by Ruth Plumley Thompson, based on the stories by L. Frank Baum. So this is the 28th book in the Wizard of Oz series. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb. I'm going to go through and share my, uh, my tabs and stuff, and then share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. Speedy and Oz in which legendary Umbrella Island flies magically through the air until it careens smack into the forehead of an extremely unpleasant giant. Meanwhile, Speedy, the New York lad, is making a soaring trip sky with himself, propelled by an erupting geezer and encased in Terry Bubble, the jolly living skeleton of a huge dinosaur. It's soon up to Speedy to save the princess of Umbrella Island from both the demands of Loxo the giant and the warring countries of Roraway and Norway. So, let's get started. So there are a few points at which this directly addresses the reader which bothers me. So for example, for about as long as it would take you to count to ten, the umbrellas, le the umbrellians lay where they had fallen. Especially because that one you could easily just say as long as it would take to count to ten, you don't have to directly address the reader with the use of you there. And then we get this bit which kind of betrays that the narrator isn't omniscient, which is weird because it acts as though it is. Um, now I have suspected that the Umbrellians were of some strange fairy origin, for how otherwise could we account for a talking cat, a practicing wizard, or the flying island itself? Um, and then she says, but I must not interrupt the action, basically. And it just, it reads very strangely to me. And another example we get, but Loxo, I am afraid, did not wish to be cheered or charmed. Again, I just don't like this way that the narrator is speaking directly to the reader and referring to themselves, you know? Um, then they find uh, Speedy and his, his father, no his uncle, sorry. They find a complete skeleton and bones of a Mesozoic dinosaur, unearthed and assembled by Paul Sanderson, FRGS, FZS. And I like this. Why all the initials inquired Speedy, raising one eyebrow? I'll bet it means he was frightened by a green snake Friday, September 17th. And Uncle Billy says, these initials show he is a fellow of the Royal Geographic and Zoological Societies of England. Very cool. And then yes, that is the dinosaur that gets kind of reanimated as as the beginning says and uh, the dinosaur when he feels speedy inside his chest he's like what is that lump inside my chest did i swallow a rock or a turtle am i catching old pneumonia or whatever and i just like that as opposed to pneumonia because this obviously this fossil skeleton is thousands of years old 10 millions of years old in fact and i like this little just exchange you know really terry bubble you are positively gruesome i thought i grew some myself very nice. Just those are the kinds of puns that I do enjoy from the uh, Oz books. So I always enjoy seeing the uh, exclamations that people in the Oz books come out with and this one is no different. So Scissoroo ducks down in horror and exclaims, Great Lakes, Cakes and Waffles! Uh, and so uh, Speedy says this is how Terrible Bubble gets his names. Uh, I thought a prehistoric monster was terrible at first, admitted Speedy, as he hastily wound up his recital. And that's how he got his new name. I called him Terrible, but we were shaking about so, and I was so rattled. It sounded like Terry Bubble. He likes Terry bubble for a name and I like Terry bubble for a friend and I hope you'll like him too I like this uh, pansy gets excited he should have a medal scissor two medals three medals and a saucer of cream and I like uh, the watch cat um, well Kachuka goes anyone could push a button then why didn't you inquire the watch cat because you were not here my bold counselor because you were hiding under the king's throne and still have some gold dust sticking to your nose don't deny it you were there and the boy was here which makes him a hero and you were there oh and um, yeah, Raj, who's in charge of, uh, was he, in charge of Roraway. Uh, and Roraway and Norway are, are, are at war with each other. And uh, yeah, the guy in charge of Roraway has got this gun and he goes, um, Naturally, I've not, I have not used my gun on Norway. It would sink the island like a stone and leave me no one to make war on. And I just, it does seem like a very human thing to do. To not vanquish your enemy in a war because then you wouldn't have anyone left, left to go to war with. Oh yeah, and Waddy has a silver hammer, which just made me think of the song Maxwell's Silver Hammer by the Beatles. And we have quite a few spelling mistakes in this that are like basic ones, like here we have, uh, he too, in spite of his long night's labours, was looking forward to a pleasant morning. But it's spelled two, T-O. Just one of the great threats in this, uh, just wait till I catch him, I'll turn him into a goose egg and boil him for breakfast. Another typo in this, we get drums ticks instead of drumstick. And another great, um, exclamation here. Boy, let me look at you. Silks and satins, boots and a queue. Where have you been? Uh, this is his Uncle Billy when he gets home. And this is a bit where the, the book kind of directly addresses us, but I quite like the sentiment. I just don't like the way it was handled. Um, you, now knowing the whole strange story, will realise Uncle Billy's astonishment and surprise at the amazing experiences of Speedy and the dinosaur. We'll all have to watch sharply for that water gun, for as surely as fishes have fins and turkeys have feathers, Speedy and his uncle will duplicate and perfect the Sea King's curious invention. 
So yeah, Speedy and Oz by Ruth Promley Thompson, book number 28 in the Wizard of Oz series. I did enjoy it actually, I put in my written review. Um, you wouldn't want to skip into this series, like it does make most sense to read it all through in order, but if you were to skip in, this would be a pretty good one to skip to because it gives you a good idea of what to expect from uh, you know the later books in the series. Overall, I did enjoy it. It was uh, one of the stronger 3.5 out of 5s for me. Um, yeah, Speedy and Oz. So there we have it, that's what I made of Speedy and Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.